Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and welcome to something kind of new that we're trying here on the channel. I say kind of new because we've actually been doing this on and off again over the past couple years that we've been doing this channel, but I now want to make it more of a regular thing. We are now going to start doing a regular weekly show in which we just spotlight a comic that I want to talk about. Every single week we do comic class on this channel where we talk about something new in the comic book world, some new story that came out, a brand new issue coming out, but I've been wanting to do a series in which I just spotlight a book that I enjoy. It might not be new, it could be years old, it's just something that I want to talk about. And we're doing this for two reasons. One reason is because you guys have been asking me non-stop over the past couple years to do more videos talking about comic books. So alright, you know what, I'm gonna do it. In fact, you guys have even said you want me to do a show just like this, where I just talk about a book that I enjoy, even if it is not a brand new series. So fine, we're going to start finally doing that. The other reason why we are going to finally start doing this is because I need money. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, that's not a reason why we're doing this show. However, it is a nice little benefit of doing a show like this because you see, in every single one of these comic spotlight videos that I'm doing, I'm going to put a link in the description down below of where you can go to Amazon to buy the comic that I'm talking about, either digitally or physically. And if you go through that link and buy that comic on Amazon, or even if you don't buy that comic but you just buy anything else on Amazon, as long as you start by going through the link in the description of these videos, I will get a small cut of the profits. It's a great way to check out these new series and also help support this channel at the same time. And for the first comic that I want to talk about on our new weekly spotlight series, I have to go with Black Hammer. Yes, Black Hammer is a series that's been out for about two years now, and it recently just kind of did a soft relaunch. It did that thing that Marvel and DC love to do all the time, in which they just come out with a brand new issue number one. However, a lot of the times when Marvel and DC do that, it's to help boost sales. This time they did it because they're actually entering Act 2 of their big overall story. This series has been selling wonderfully. It's one of Dark Horse's highest selling books. In fact, it sold so well, it's actually spawned multiple spin-off series, each of which actually are really darn good on their own as well. But I actually really respect this book that when they released issue number one of the new Black Hammer Age of Doom series, it was not to come in here and go, okay, hopefully this gets us more readers. It actually is to kind of go, End of Act 1, start of Act 2. And yeah, when I picked up this issue, I went, oh my god, this really does feel like I'm entering the next stage. It felt very appropriate to make this a brand new number one issue. But what is this book about? Well, it is about a group of superheroes, each of whom are meant to be references, parodies, allusions, however you want to phrase it. They are meant to represent classic Golden Age superheroes. Every single one of them, you can point directly to a golden or silver age superhero and go, that's who this character is meant to be. Like, the leader of the group is Abraham Slam, who is clearly meant to be a reference to Captain America, but also a lot of those old pulp heroes like Doc Savage, like those guys that didn't really have powers, but they just went out there with their fist just to go and save the day. He's meant to represent those guys. Then there's Golden Gale. She is meant to be Shazam, because she is this little girl who found a wizard who gave her powers, and anytime that she says the wizard's name, she can transform into Golden Gale, superhero form. However, they do really interesting stuff with every single one of these characters because every single issue, even though it's set in the present day, it will spotlight one character and it will flashback to them before any of the crazy stuff in this book went down, which I will talk about in just a second. And it will show what their life was like when they were still superheroes, back when they were just starting off, what their life was like before we got to the events of the present. And you get to see, yeah, there was some dark stuff going down. And you get to see all the depth uh, to these characters. That is the great thing about this. Every single one of these characters, they're not meant to just be, hey, I recognize that. It's meant to be this character. Wonderful. It really does almost kind of feel like Watchmen. You know when you were reading Watchmen and you were like, okay, that's supposed to be this character, that's supposed to be this character. But man, they are taking some dark turns with them. It really does remind me of that, except it doesn't get that dark, but it actually gets deeper with them. Not to come in here and like criticize Watchmen in any way, shape, or form. The point of Watchmen was to go look at how dark and messed up these superheroes' lives have become. When you look at the stuff happening to these superheroes, it's not, I don't want to say the stuff that goes down in Watchmen for anybody who hasn't read it, but it's not stuff quite on that level but it's a lot sadder, it's a lot more heartbreaking. Like, a good example of it is Golden Gale. Golden Gale, yeah, when she found these, uh, when she uh, got her powers as a little girl, she would then turn into a superhero. 
but as she got older, every time that she activated her powers, she went back to being a little girl. Like, every time that she went into her superhero form, she was back at the same age that she was when she first got her powers. And we get to see how that kind of messes with her. Like, as an adult, she's like, I don't want to turn back into a little child, even if it means saving the day. That really is uncomfortable for me. But when she gets much older and her body starts to ache, she can't move all that well, now she starts actually looking forward to turning back into her old superhero self. But then after all that, there even comes another point in her life when she's like, dude, I don't even care if I'm an old person now. I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be the young, peppy girl superhero anymore. I have totally outgrown that. Yeah, you really get inside her mind. Or Abraham Slam. He is one of the oldest members of this team. There comes a point in which it is clearly meant to represent the big shift in comics that happened back in the 90s in which you see him putting on big shoulder blades and spikes and armor and a whole bunch of pouches on him. And he's like, yeah, this is what the kids are into these days. And he goes out there and he just gets his butt kicked and all the young superheroes are like, um, yeah, listen, we respect you and all that stuff, but could you go and sit down before you break a hip or anything? And that costume is just kind of sad. And man, it does make you think about, man, what must it be like to be an aging superhero? And the younger heroes just look at you like, we don't really need you and you're kind of sad now. It really does make your heart break a little bit for them. And heck, I'm not even getting into some of the saddest characters of them all. I mean, Barbalian, there is a character, Barbalian. Uh, although they all just call him Barbie. Um, he is meant to be a combination of Martian Manhunter and John Carter of Mars. Like I said, they were going way back with some of these characters. And he was seen as an outcast on his home planet. And then he discovers Earth and he's like, oh shoot, a fresh start. I can come down there. He comes to Earth, he uses shape-shifting powers, starts blending in with people. He works as a cop. He works as a cop for years and he forms friendships with people. But here's the thing, he starts thinking to himself, I finally found a place where I can fit in. People accept me here. I mean, sure, I'm an alien, but as long as I disguise myself as a human, everyone accepts me. Everyone is friends with me. This is great. But he is also gay. And then the day comes out when he reveals that he's gay, and then suddenly everyone on the force turns against him. Everyone turns away from him. And he's like, it doesn't matter where I go. I'm always going to be an outcast. That was so moving in that moment. It honestly hurt just seeing how hard that hit him to, re to realize that about himself. It was heartbreaking. Or there's another character in there, Madame Dragonfly, who I'm not even going to reveal her backstory because it is one of the most messed up backstories in this whole thing. And I just want you guys to live through that yourselves. I want you guys to actually discover it on your own. But just talking about how this book is able to capture all the old timey tropes of comic books, she's not even a superhero. She is meant to be the Crypt Keeper. She is meant to be one of those old EC horror comics characters. Not one of the ones in the actual stories, but the ones who would actually tell the story. And when it actually finally got to the issue that spotlighted her, it was her just going, yes, come into Mag Madame Dragonfly's den and let me tell you a tale of the macabre. And it's just her telling her own story, but her talking to the audience in the way that the narrator of one of those old Tales from the Crypt uh, style comic books would do. It was a brilliant way to approach that to really show these are all the different tropes of Golden Age comics that we're able to capture in this book. So it's already got an amazing cast of characters, each of whom have really messed up just, I don't want to keep using this word, but heartbreaking backstories in there. Not dark. Dark is like, oh, all these terrible things happen to me, X, Y, and Z. Oh, just going down that checklist of all the horrible, like just uncomfortable things to look at. No. Every single one of these characters have really dramatic backstories. Not dark, dramatic. Because they're able to build them all up and then you're able to see just how really upsetting the things that happen to them are. You get to get in their shoes and then when you just see the legs get swept out from underneath them, you feel it. They are able to do an amazing job setting up every single one of these characters and kind of letting you know what is going through their mind. But what is this story actually about? It's not just the sad backstories of all these amazing characters, although I would read a book just about that. No, the actual premise of this book is a really intriguing storyline that almost feels like if you found a way to take a Twilight Zone episode and extend it into an ongoing series and make it work issue after issue. Jeff Lemire is great at coming up with ideas like that and this is another beautiful example of that. Basically what this story is about 
is in the present day, all these heroes, many of whom have been retired, got called back into action by Black Hammer, who is this world's version of like Superman or Thor or the new gods. He's kind of a combination of many different types of characters. So it's this guy who is like the biggest, strongest superhero of them all. He's been fighting this evil god who's kind of meant to be kind of like Darkseid for years and now all the other gods have been killed, they've been wiped out, so it's just Black Hammer and he has to stop this dark god as it's coming to Earth. He gets all these remaining heroes together for one last battle. There's some big explosion and they suddenly find themselves on this farm. They don't know how they got there, they don't know what's happening, but when Black Hammer goes, yeah, there's almost like some kind of a barrier around this farm, around this town. I'm just gonna see what happens when I go through it. I'm the strongest one among us. Clearly, I will be able to, zzz, he's gone. He is instantly dead. His magic hammer that gave him his power, it's all that's left. It's just sitting there on the ground. No one can move it. Uh, as I said, there are some references to Thor in here. And yeah, the biggest, strongest guy among them, instantly killed, instantly taken out. And now these remaining heroes, they don't know where they are. They don't know how to get back home. They have zero way of communicating back home. And they are just stuck in this little farm. And many of them can't even really use their powers. Like Golden Gale, she can no longer transform back into her human self. She is now forever trapped as this little girl. The thing that she didn't want to be anymore, even though she is a like 60, 70 year old woman. And she just thinks, I would do anything for a drink right now but I'm a little girl, I can't walk into a bar anymore. This is a nightmare to me that I have to go back to school. Or, you know, uh, Barbalian, like he was always seen as an outcast. Now he has this new place that is still looking at him like an outcast. He still can't fit in. So it's just so crushing to see him go through that. Or Madam Dragonfly, I mean, again, she has such a messed up backstory. And now she kind of is trapped in this little swamp where she has to relive that backstory all the time. She's constantly thinking about, um, I haven't even gotten into Colonel Weird, who is one of the strangest characters here. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's this incredible idea of these heroes have no idea why they're here. They're just stuck on this farm and they can go into town and they start making connections with people in the town, but as some members of this team really want to leave, they really want to get home. Like Golden Gale, she wants to go back to being her human self. She doesn't want to keep doing this. She wants to escape. There are other characters here, like, like Abraham Slam. He was a guy who felt like, oh yeah, the world kind of rejected me. The world grew past me. But here, it's just a simple little town. And I found a girl who works at the diner who kind of likes me. And we're starting to go out and this place is kind of more my speed. I don't need to go back to being a reject old superhero. So you get some great dynamics on this team through stuff like that. Like who wants to stay, who wants to leave. But then as they start to research towards the end of the first season of this series, before it went into the Age of Doom series, they start to actually research stuff about this town. They actually uh, end up meeting up with another character who I'm not going to go into that. I won't spoil any of the stuff that happens there. But they end up meeting up with another character who starts researching some of the stuff in like say the library and they find out stuff about the town or they, let's just say, don't find out stuff about the town that they kind of should know about the town, that any town should know about itself. And they start realizing, okay, there's a mystery here that we never bothered to look into. And yeah, this isn't just a town. We knew something was wrong because there's an invisible force field around here that we're not allowed to leave. We can't make contact with our home. No one's ever heard of us. No one even knows the town that we all came from. There is something definitely weird about this small town. And as the book goes along, you get to see how deep that mystery goes. And it's honestly one of the most intriguing stories I have ever read in a book. So as I said, this book has so many things working for it. It's got one of the best mysteries I've ever read in a comic. I seriously, every single issue, am picking this up, just holding my breath to see what new bit of information we're going to get about this town next. And heck, in Age of Doom, there is some brand new element that they introduced that made me just think, Oh God, what's coming next in all this? And it's stunning to me that this series is able to make me do that even up at this point, even at the start of act two of this book. It still got me holding my breath with every single issue to see what's going to happen. 
Uh, but also, some of the best characters in any comic I've ever read. And it's because this book is not afraid to delve into their past. To just dedicate entire issue after issue to just talking about their backstories. And you think that would eventually get old because it's not like they go through each of these characters once just to give you some kind of an idea of their backstory. Get, they go through them twice. They keep repeating going back because there's still more to know about every single one of these characters. It's not like every single one of these characters went on one adventure that helped define them. No, these characters lived multiple lifetimes worth of adventures, each of which had an impact on who they are as a person. And this book is not afraid to explore every single part of their life. And it really does help to create such dynamic, interesting characters that you really want to learn more about. Every single time that goes to a new part of their backstory, it's not like, all right, move this story along. It's like, oh, tell me what's going to happen next with them. So yeah, Black Hammer, I'm sure many of you have probably heard of this book, but you still haven't checked it out. I mean, heck, if you've watched this channel, I know you've heard about it because for the past two years in a row, it's been my top 10 comics of the year list. So yes, I've been praising this book for a while, and if you have been waiting until now to finally check it out, I cannot recommend getting into this book enough. So again, follow the link to Amazon in the description down below. If you decide to buy the book through there, then we will get a small cut of the profits. Or again, if you already own the book, but you just wanna help support this channel in any way that you can, then you can always go through that link and just buy anything else on Amazon and we'll still get a cut of the profits. But if you don't want to buy this book, if you don't have the money to buy this book, but you still want to help support this channel in some other way, remember, it doesn't cost you anything to share this video around the web, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, hit that bell, or just follow us on Twitter, Twitch, and Tumblr at Professor Thorgy. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.